Chapter 2. So what was your first dream? You know the one I mean. But you were super young, like a kid that didn't know nothing? When you are still new to this world, everything is possible. Mom and Dad are still your whole world, if you have them. Nothing bad could ever happen when you're a kid. Until it does. But in the stage of innocence, the first dream you had, there was a reason you had that dream. You may not be able to be Superman and zoom around the world, but you could volunteer at a children's hospital and be someone's Superman there. Your little heart has set up stuffed animals at your tea party and pointed at the imaginary chalkboard and taught those animals their ABCs. Maybe you became a teacher or still want to become a teacher. I was five years old in preschool. My name came out H-E-I-B-I when I wrote it, and I wanted to be an author. It took me a while to get the gumption and self-discipline to actually make that dream a reality. And as you write more, you learn more of what works for you and what doesn't. If your dream is to be an author like me, I will give you the same advice I was given. Write down every idea, write down every character, write down every title, keep it forever, and maybe one day you will use it. You don't always know genius when you start dreaming. And that goes for every life and every occupation. I'm a Christian. I believe life is about God. Sometimes that has a negative connotation. But for me, it means waking up and being kind. It means letting go of anger and bitterness. It means asking God what kind of life we should live together as a team. Do I make the best choices? I'm not going to answer that. Do I make choices that will walk me into a future without regrets? Absolutely. If you regret your life in any way, I am sorry. Life must be really sad, but God is a God of miracles, and you can still turn your life into a life you are proud of. The past is the past. Start again. Be a better you today than you were yesterday. Be a kinder you each day. Toss out anger and hate. Embrace love and kindness. I love opinionated people because I know where they stand. Disagreeing with someone is not hate. It is called having your opinion. Your own opinion. You can be kind and straightforward. So back when you were five or so, what dream did you have in your heart? Some people have more than one dream. I remember everyone saying as a kid, oh, one week they want to be a ballerina and then another month, they want to be a drummer. Little girls that grow up to be, grow up to teach dance to other girls have a chance to build up children's positive self-image. Isn't that worthwhile? Why can't you be a dream, drummer at your church? Why can't you start a garage band? What's wrong with writing random poems in your bedroom that you don't think anyone will listen to? Learn an instrument and play it to music. You might have a song in your heart. That will change someone's life forever. We all have a song that changed our life forever. Someone had to write it. So what it, if it is one a one-hit wonder? That dream you had in your heart as a child, did you follow through? This is the part where you answer, yes or no. If, you, if the answer is no, why didn't you follow through? Who told you that you couldn't? I hope I'm never the reason that someone doesn't follow through with their dream. I hope I am never the reason that someone doesn't fulfill God's purpose for their life. I hope I am never the reason someone feels inadequate as a person. Ask yourself in your dream, is it still important to you? If the answer is yes, dream it and do it. Make a plan and walk toward your dream. Some dreams take time. Some dreams take a mindset change. Often, I am my, worst, my own worst enemy. And until I get me on board with my dream, it won't happen. But when I get me on board, I am surprised at the changes in my attitude and how I approach life. Are you on board to make your dream come true? So that was chapter two, and that was a lot of heavy stuff. You know, those are thoughts that have been with us for a really long time. And those thoughts that we, we first had as a child, 
those desires that never left us, I think God had a plan for them. I think he has a plan for you. There's a dream that you never went out and pursued the way God wanted you to. Even the dreams that we live today still need to be walked forward. So my challenge for you is to pray about it, think about it, and to commit to that dream. Because there is something in you that has that there for a reason. Now, it may not be exactly what you thought it would be. It may be a headache if you're teaching children and they're running around the room and Sally is punching Billy and Billy's tripping Bobby and whatever. You might have wanted to build shelves and houses and then you go in and put in cabinets and the cabinet's the wrong size and you have to reorder it. And it's just a big headache. But guess what? Life has headaches and that's okay. It doesn't mean that you don't have the opportunity to live your dream. There's something about that dream that when we live it, our soul is a little bit more satisfied than it's ever been before. So, live your dream, dream it and do it. Until next time, love you guys.